hey guys welcome to budget with a july dreamer my name is miranda and on this channel i talk about personal finance specifically sharing tips on how to save how to invest as well as how to budget if these topics of interest to you then do not forget to hit that subscribe button as well as give this video a like because it truly does help out my channel so you guys i am now ready to share everything <laughs> that i have learned so far about buying my first rental property here in the uk there has been a lot of tears it's been a long six months i would not lie because there are so many things that happened with buying this rental property that did not happen when i was buying my first property in my home that i currently live in because i was just like oh uh, that was smooth sailing so i was thinking this was going to be too but maybe it's something to do with covid i don't know but you know this process has been a long one so first things first i have been a homeowner for just over i think 15 months so i bought my property last year in march before we weren't into lockdown i actually got the keys the day uh we were supposed to be going into lockdown which means i couldn't hire any movers or anything like that but thankfully my sister didn't live too far and the house that i actually live in now was literally a five minute drive from my previous property that i was renting so it just made things a whole lot easier for me i mean it was a lot of trips back and forth you know driving to that property to get all of those things into this house and it also meant that because everything was getting shut down i couldn't buy a lot of furniture that i wanted to buy so my house i think was probably empty like i was still living in it but i didn't have much stuff for the first i think four to eight weeks but yeah so i've been a homeowner for just under one year six months yeah i think or was it 15 months i can't remember but yeah um so by november last year i had all of this money saved up that i wanted to do something with and i knew that i wanted to get a rental property but i wasn't sure what i could afford i you know i wasn't sure if i could afford another mortgage I have a very good paying job, I won't lie. I do have a very good paying job. And if I really just sat down and crunched the numbers, which I did, then I could comfortably pay um, two mortgages of like the same price that I pay for this one. But I was just like, I don't want to overstretch myself. So I started speaking to my mortgage broker. So this is the first thing I'll recommend, whether you're a first time buyer or you are on your fifth property, what have you, I would still recommend a mortgage broker. So he's my financial advisor. <laughs> um, I reached out to him and I was like, listen, I am looking to get another property. This is how much money I have saved up. And this is the type of property that I'm looking at. Let me know what i can get in terms of a mortgage we crunched the numbers and he gave it to me real this is what you can get so this is the only the properties this much and below those are the only ones you can afford and i also knew one thing that i didn't want to get a leasehold so i basically wanted a freehold like my current home i didn't want any leasehold um properties so that's what i went with and that narrowed actually my field because the area that i live in and i think i should mention this that i wanted a rental property in the area that i currently live in i didn't want anything far away that i i would be too far to do anything if i decided to take on the the work associated with uh, being a landlord so i was just like if that's the route that i chose i wanted to be close by so that i could just nip over and sort out whatever i needed to so yeah so my area meant that i narrowed the field even more to the choices that i had and also they were they are more one bed two bed flats in my area but they were either above my by maximum ask price or they were leasehold so like i said leaseholds were out of the question anyway so which even narrowed my field further but we crunched the numbers i reached out to as many estate agents as i could and i found a property that i really loved had a look at it definitely decided this is the one cost a hundred and ninety thousand pounds and uh, if it's your second property in the uk you have to put at least 25 percent um 
deposit on the house i already knew that for me i could put a deposit of fifty thousand pounds no more that was my maximum i mean if i wanted to push come to shove i would but i that would mean that i'll go broke <laughs> and we ain't trying to go broke okay so i decided my maximum 25 percent um mortgage that i was going to put down was going to be fifty thousand, and that's what i decided to do so step one i knew that i wanted to look in my area step two i knew that i could only afford a uh, maximum fifty thousand pounds as um a down payment so that meant that i could only afford properties which were two hundred thousand and less this is how i started looking and this is how i started crunching the numbers so i've got my trusted notebook here where i wrote all the costs associated with getting this property so obviously i've spoken about the deposit so for a hundred and ninety thousand pound uh uh property the deposit 25 percent is forty seven thousand five hundred, which works in my favor because it saves me about two thousand five hundred then I, I mentioned i also spoke to my mortgage broker so the same one who helped me with this property is the same one who helped me with my second one and i like look he's my mortgage advisor slash financial advisor and we work well together so he was able to give me everything that i was looking for i was able to ask a lot of questions we were able to do a lot of things but that also came with a fee but because i used him for the second time and um he's my mortgage broker or financial advisor for life he only charged me 99 pounds for my first property i think i paid about 350 or thereabouts so for this consultation i only paid 99 pounds then i found a lawyer i wanted to use the same lawyer that i'd used for the first property but she actually was overwhelmed with other properties and it was all because the uk government had just announced about this uh stamp duty thing imajigi where uh i think it was for, like properties first time buyers weren't gonna be paying um any stamp duty on properties under five hundred thousand, I think, or thereabouts. So yeah, she was very overwhelmed. I couldn't uh, use the same lawyer, so I found a different lawyer who was uh, familiar with the property that I was actually buying, and that is actually going to cost me because I haven't paid that yet. There's just few more details that need to be finished before we finalize with the property i have signed the documents we're just waiting for the other side and we'll exchange contracts and have a date so uh, i've been given an estimate of 1140 pounds but i know for sure that this is going to increase so in my budgeting i'm budgeting 1300 to 1500 because i know there are a few costs that have gone up because of the things that we have had to do for this property then the stamp duty like i mentioned for first time buyers there is a stamp duty waiver or if i can call it that so i think i think don't uh, quote me on this but i think it's properties under five hundred thousand that are getting no stamp duty and i think it depends on your area as well because for my first property it was 340 i believe and i still had to pay about three thousand pounds or thereabouts for my stamp duty so but as this will be my second property my stamp duty i don't get this stamp duty waiver but i still have to pay if um a levy some sort of fee about three percent so that fee for me if i am able to close on this deal before th june 30th i'm going to pay five thousand seven hundred if i don't close by then i will be paying seven thousand one hundred for stamp duty um fees and i will leave links down below for stamp duty what it is and you know it's tax land tax in the uk but it's a hefty amount for a second property for your first property if it's below the um the limit that they have set then you kind of can get away with not paying anything and if it's above the limit they said then you pay not a huge chunk but you still pay about three thousand four thousand pounds depending on your house price but when it comes to your rental property lord this is something people don't tell you but yeah then i had to have a surveyor so my lender actually sent out their own surveyor but he's more looking at the property saying okay so she's asking for this amount of money to buy this property is this property actually worth it 
does it actually you know they will look at all of that jazz and but that severe is only for the lender so they do what they need to do they check and then they tell the lender yes their house is actually worth that less or more whatever and but that is also something that um is covered by the lender but also i have to pay evaluation fee which there has been a lot of costs and i'll talk about them in a minute so my surveyor cost me 570 pounds because i wanted a snagging report done on the house it's a new build so there were a lot of things that were still very new and um they had done their own surveying provided report but i also just wanted a snagging report done which was done the lender has sorted out 90 percent of the things that were wrong with um their house that my surveyor had quoted so i paid 570 for that then mortgage lender fees now these are things that surprised me even when i got my first property i was just like wait <laughs> why do i have to pay you money i'm already borrowing money for you why do i have to pay more money but yes so i had to pay some um lender fees for my first property i chose to pay them up front as opposed to add them to the mortgage because if i add them to the mortgage it just means i'll be paying interest on my mortgage plus the fees and i don't want to do that so i pay that up front but for my rental property i have actually decided to just add them onto the mortgage purely because i am going for an interest only mortgage and i think i'll make a separate video about the different types of mortgages out there in the uk but i literally chose an interest only mortgage which means i'm only paying interest every single month on that loan i'm not actually paying anything towards principal it wasn't my first choice but it's something that a lot of people have just like it's better you go do that and i've got a fixed rate for that for i think i don't know if i chose three years or five years but whatever so that's what i have chosen for this rental property so yeah but the mortgage lender fees came to 2800 or oh, thereabouts but yeah so just be prepared that there are also those associated costs then for housing searches so like water searches land searches what have you all of this is done by your lawyer so i kind of i've had it separated you know out there but on my itinerary from my lawyer i can see all of those fees so all of those searches are costing me uh just over 500 pounds and then i have decided that for this rental property i actually don't want to manage it 100 percent myself because i have my hands dipped into so many pots that i want somebody to take that burden away so i'm budgeting for the first for the first month i'll have to pay 480 to the estate agents to set up everything and then about 50 60 pounds every single month moving forward but they will be managing the property for me they will be searching for tenants answering any issues with the tenants telling me if there's any cost that i need to know about all of that jazz so this is just to say that for my first rental property i am putting down forty seven thousand five hundred. but the overall cost of everything associated with renting buying my first rental property uh brings it up to a nice round off of fifty seven thousand pounds so it's a lot of money <laughs> i won't lie it's a lot of money but i'm really excited to actually get onto this journey of being a landlord of owning my first rental property my plan is to start saving up for the second one now that i know of the associated costs but also if you watch my other videos you also know that i am looking to pay off my mortgage for my current home in the next 10 years and i'm doing extra repayments on that every single month so let's see if i can still juggle all of these things but right now i'm very grateful that i'm in a position where i could buy another property on top of my home and you know get to invest as well and just build up my portfolio so i'm really excited about this and i cannot wait to share more with you guys if you have any questions about this process the buying a rental property and or in the uk and all of that just then leave your questions in the in the comment section below i'll leave as much information in the description bar as i can but yeah so thank you so much for watching my video do not forget to hit that like button if you haven't subscribed yet do not forget to hit that subscribe button as well because it truly does help out my channel so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video
拜。